into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody, wherever you at, just give him a praise, give him some glory, and give him some honor. Hallelujah. He deserves all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. For another day that you have made, for another day that you have allowed us to be in your presence, God. So we thank you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless his name this morning. We give him the glory and we give him the honor. Hallelujah. And uh, before I go, I'd like to read the scripture. Before we're going to pray, I'd like to read the scripture. Hallelujah. It's out of Philippians chapter 4, um, verse 6. Um, through seven, and the words say, uh, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, yes, with thanksgiving, Thank let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, Hallelujah, hallelujah. which surpasses all understanding, yes, will guard your hearts and minds Woo! through Christ Jesus." And it's very important as we go through what we're going through in this season. With everything that is going on right now, the Lord said, be not anxious. Don't, don't worry about it or don't stress about it. But pray about it and continually seek my face. And the peace that I give will be with you because I sent my son Jesus to die. So as we're going to prayer this morning, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. God, we bless you this morning, God. We say thank you and we worship you this morning. God, we praise you, hallelujah. God, we love you this morning. We adore you, my God, hallelujah. We exalt you today, God. You are the great God, hallelujah. You are the best God, hallelujah. Besides you, there is no other God, hallelujah. We thank you, God. We, we bless you. The, the word say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth this morning. So, so we come with a humble heart today, God. We, we come with a repentant heart this morning, God. Uh, to say thank you for keeping us this morning. Uh, thank you for waking us up this morning, God. Uh, clothing us in our right mind, God. Uh, giving us the activities of our limb, Jesus. Uh, so we thank you for that, God. Uh, we bless your name, the most high God. Uh, the name that is above all other names. Uh, the, the name that had the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Things going to have to get changed, hallelujah. Things going to have to change when we mention the name of Jesus. Uh, just like Peter and John, God, uh, that was walking in the temple, hallelujah. Silver and gold we might not have, but such as I have. Uh, and the name of Jesus, wise up and walk. Uh, so we call on that name this morning, God. The name that can change the atmosphere. The name that can heal. The name that can save. So, so we pray to that name this morning. Uh, we asking that name for protection this morning. Uh, we asking that game to we asking that name to come against anything, God, uh, that the enemy is trying to distract us this morning, God. Uh, or the enemy is doing rampant things right now, God. Uh, distracting your people, my God. Uh, so we come before you right now, God. Uh, Bind in the hands of the enemy, God. Uh, because you said whatever we bind in this earth, God, uh, you will bind it in heaven, God. Uh, and whatever we loose on this earth, God, uh, you will loose it in heaven, God. Uh, so we bind the hand of the enemy right now. Uh, that is coming against our inheritance, God. Uh, that is coming against our people, God. Uh, that is coming against our children, God. Uh, that is coming against our ministry, God. Uh, that is coming against our job, God. Uh, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, so we come against that spirit of distraction this morning. Uh, we bind the hands of the enemy trying to, to, take, uh, to take our focus before you, God, uh, because we know everything belongs to you, God. Uh, and if we keep our mind, our mind stayed on you, God, uh, everything will be all right. Uh, but we're in a season right now, God, uh, when everybody is running to and fro, God. Uh, but we know there's only one person that's trying to go running to and fro, and that's the enemy. Uh, because the Bible says he run to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, God. Uh, but we know we are covered on the blood. And by the blood of Jesus we are covered today, God. Oh, we are putting the blood of our doorposts this morning. And the enemy come when he see that blood of our doorposts, God. He shall pass over us, God. Because he has no power over your people, God. So we pray this morning, God. We pray for protection, God. We pray for the anointing to cover us, God. In the name of Jesus, God. 
So this morning, God, we rebuke any distraction, God. We rebuke any sickness, God. We rebuke any trap that the enemy is trying to set for us, God. Oh, we rebuke suicide, God. We rebuke depression, God. We rebuke anxieties, God. We rebuke fear, God. Because your word said you have not given us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of sound mind and power, God. And the power is through the blood of the Jesus. It's through the blood of the land. The blood that is still running warm in our veins today, God. The blood that went through the cross, God. Oh, they pierced him on his side. They pierced his head and his feet, God. And they pumped him on the side and blood and water came out, God. Oh, we call on that blood today, God. We know by that blood we are saved and we know by that blood we are healed this morning, God. Because you was bruised and you was, you was bruised for our iniquities, God. The chastisement of our peace was upon your shoulder this morning, God. So we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We shall live and not die and do the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. I speak strength to you this morning. I speak life to you this morning. I speak healing. Hallelujah. I release joy to you this morning. I release the power of God this morning, God. Oh, Father God, I pray for our church this morning, God. I pray for our deacons, y'all, God. I pray for our trustees, God. I pray for every member of Baptist Union, God. You know what they need this morning, God. You know in this season as they're going through, God, you know exactly what they need today, God. So go see about our members, God. Strengthen them, God. Encourage them this morning, God. Bless our sick and shut in, God. Keep them in the name of Jesus, God. And right now, God, as our men of God is coming to bring the word, God, Gird him right now with the word, God. Um, strengthen him right now, God, so he can speak the truth, God. Um, so he can speak the word just as you've given him, God. Um, with no fear and no hesitation, God. Um, because the word said towards the end, God. Um, oh, people's going to just looking for word to be, to have itching ears, God. Um, but we want to hear a word from heaven, God. Um, we want to want to hear a word that's just going to set us free, God. Um, we want to hear a word that's going to put us in the right path, God, because you are soon to come, Father God. God, you are soon to come, hallelujah. And we want to see you, God. We want to be in your presence, God. We want to be with you in that holy place called Jerusalem, God. Oh, Father God, we know, God, the end is near, God. Yes, it is. Father God, we understand that our 400 years is, is coming to an end. Yes, sir. And the enemy don't have no choice but to let these people loose. Yes, let your people loose, God. Don't have no choice, God, but to let your people loose. But we know the enemy is going to try to do everything he can, God, to keep your people in bondage. But we curse the enemy right now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy was trying to do right now, God, we silence him right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We call fire up on his head right now. In the name of Jesus. Just like Elijah called fire, God, we, we're calling a fire on the top of the enemy right now. Gird our pastor this morning so, so he can preach the word, God, with no fear and no hesitation, God, because we need to hear a word from heaven today. We need to hear that word is going to put us in the right path, and the path of righteousness, God. We bless his family, God, we bless our first lady, God, and we bless the children, God. Continue to protect us, God. Continue to keep us, God. Because you say, he who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, God, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, God. So we want to stay under the shadow today, God. We don't want a vacation under the shadow, God. We don't want to take the break under the shadow, God. But we want to dwell under the shadow. So you can keep us. So you can protect us. So we plan it right now, God. We claim victory right now. We claim all of it right now, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord, saints. You know, I read somewhere in 1 Peter 7 and 5. That it says, cast your cares yeah. upon him, mm -hmm. for he careth for you. Yeah. And in times like these, mm. we need to cast our cares 
upon him. Uh, we are so glad 
uh, to be able to worship, to gather again Glad. around our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Good morning, Baptist Union. Amen. Good morning. Uh, so good uh, to see you, to be with you. So glad to hear uh, so many good reports That's right. about how God is keeping us all. Yes, right. Amen. Right. He's Amen. keeping us all, even through this pandemic. That's yes, right. he is. Uh, he is keeping his children. Yes, so sir. We are eternally grateful. Amen. Uh, we want to thank you, Baptist Union, uh, once again, for your continued support. We want to thank you for encouraging words. Amen. We want to thank you for continuing to pray for continuing to study the word, uh, for continuing to sit under the word, amen, amen. Uh, for continuing to speak life over your own church. Yes, it Lord. means a whole lot. That's right. It yeah. means a whole lot when uh, the congregation itself speaks words of life over right. itself, and you've been doing that. Right. And uh, we just give thanks to God for you today amen. and for the word that he has put in your mouth. Uh, we thank you once again uh, for your giving. Amen. And uh, we are just thankful. We're also we're celebrating uh, this weekend the graduates uh, right. that we have. And so once again, uh, let's let's give them a hand. Let's give our hand. We congratulate you all uh, for accomplishing such an amazing feat. And, and please be sure. Uh, that when you have completed, amen, when you have matriculated, as they say, yeah. amen, uh, you have uh, completed something uh, that is, uh, is foundational. You are doing something in many a cases uh, that many people in the family had not done. But now they've seen you do it, and they'll be encouraged mm -hmm. to go on. So uh, this is a great time for you. You're beginning. Uh, whether you're headed towards college or whether you're uh, going on to start uh, your life, uh, you know, people say in the workforce, but uh, just living your life for Christ and whatever he has yes. you called to do. Yes, uh, this is a wonderful and amazing time for you. And please know that the grace of God is with you so that you will be a success in whatever it is that he has for you to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us, uh, at this time there is a word, um, if you would open up your Bibles in the, in the New Testament, a very familiar scripture, and it's found in Hebrews chapter 12. chapter 12, uh, as we know, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, you know, it's called the Hall of Faith, amen, in our Bibles, and uh, it goes on to chapter 12, where we see the great cloud of witnesses, amen, but we are going to start uh, verse 14, <coughs> to read 14 to the end. So if you have it, just say amen. 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 It says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicated or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how afterward he would have inherited the blessing. He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For you are not come to the mount that might be touched, that burn with fire, nor into the blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of the trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they heard and treated that would, should, 
that word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with the dark. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear a quake, but you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Amen. <coughs> let us pray. Most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you today, Lord God, just to say thank you. Thank you. Father, y'all, we want to say thank you for thank you. Uh, the rising of the sun and our arising to be able to see it. Father God, we want to say thank you for keeping us over another week, uh, allowing the plague to remain at bay. Thank you, Father God, for being a fence all around our households, all around our loved ones, all around our people, our church. Father God, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. We want to acknowledge uh, the miraculous and powerful and mighty hand of God that is keeping so many of his people in excellent health. Father God, we want to say thank you for preserving the lives of those that others had already cast doubt upon. Father God, we want to say thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for him dying on a cross to wipe away our sins, that we could become a part of your family, to be able to stand in your face without sin, Father God, basking in the love of your favor towards us because we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Father, we want to say thank you, Father God, for giving us a hope. Hallelujah. And for giving us an expected end. Lord God, we want to say thank you for all the promises that you have given us in Christ Jesus because according to your word, they belong to us. Father God, we want to say thank you for this living word and we ask that you would make it come alive before us even now. Father, we thank you for your angels that you've given charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Thank you for the blessed Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for allowing him to remind us of everything that Jesus Christ said. Father God, for revealing him to us throughout all the scripture, because he is the spirit of truth and he does comfort us. Now, oh Lord, my God, hide me behind the cross. And Father God, I pray that you would seal the door of my lips from saying the things that I ought not. But Lord, loose them to boldly proclaim the mysteries of Christ Jesus, about the goodness of his gospel, about his soon return. Father God, bringing in his kingdom and his people. Lord God, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise because you alone are worthy. We thank you. We acknowledge you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Behold the face of Jesus. Behold the face of the Lord Jesus. Um, church, this is a very uh, familiar passage of scripture. Um, you know, this is the scripture that uh, begins and uh, encourages 
his believers in him, uh, that we have such a great a cloud of witnesses right. mm -hmm. that are hanging before us. This In this scripture, uh, Paul, the most believe it was Paul, uh, paints a picture for us of believers in Jesus, of believers uh, in Christ Jesus that have been saved and they are running a race, if you will. And uh, he says that we have uh, a great cloud of witnesses uh, that are before us and they're there, everybody uh, who, uh, who exuded faith the scripture says are a great cloud of witnesses for us. Those uh, that walk not not by sight, but they walk by faith in the God of this Bible. Yeah. And they are there uh, bearing witness to us as we run the race. They're telling us you can trust right. in God. Trust yes. Good. And, uh, you know, Paul goes on and he says, look, we need to be patient as we run this race. Uh, I hear him say when he's writing to Timothy, he says, uh, now look, as you're running this race, look, nobody wins the race unless uh, they make it all the way to the end. Right. All the way. And they need to run according to the rules of the race. And the one who has made this race is God himself. Yeah. And we're encouraged to have patience as we run this race. How do we do it? By looking at Jesus. Because after all, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And we need to look at Jesus because it says, For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, uh, despising the shame. For the joy that was set before him. What was the joy that was set before Jesus while he was walking in this earth that allowed him uh, to be whipped? that allowed him to be smacked, pushed, and hit? What was the joy set before him that allowed him uh, to hang on a cross after he had been nailed on it? Uh, what was the joy? The joy set before him was us. Anybody and everybody that would receive him as Lord to see us become a part of his yeah. body. And for his body to come alive on this side of heaven, right here in this earth, for him to have a body of baptized believers made up of Jews and Gentiles alike, yet all baptized into one body, one spirit. And that was his joy uh, to know uh, that he was coming uh, to save Mankind from their sins yes. and to make them new creatures even before God himself so that he could receive them as his children. Well, he was able to see all of that hanging on the cross and scriptures telling us that's the reason why he didn't get down because he could have gotten down. He could have called legions of angels, but he hung there because he saw this end. Uh, and it says, because he saw that in, he endured the cross, despising the shame. What's that? Uh, because he had to hang on a cross. He hung there. He was being uh, publicly punished for crimes that he did not commit. Yes. Amen. Yet... He's hung between two criminals as if he was a criminal. Yes. And he still had to endure that shame. He had to be, uh, Isaiah said he was numbered with the other transgressions. Uh, David said uh, that folk would rail on him. Uh, they would be gambling for his clothes. Yes. Help me out here. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. be out here. Oh, I really don't. We, we got a lot to preach here. Uh, yeah. but, so pray with me and we'll get on through this thing. But I, I just have to share with you, he endured that shame. You know, when he was hanging, he was hanging to take away the sins of the very people that were at the foot of the cross, yeah. clowning him, yeah. right. saying, if you, you say, uh, 
that you can save so many people, why don't you save yourself? If you really the Son of God. Why don't you come on down? Clowning. And he's dying for the very ones that are clowning him. He had to endure this shame. Well, the Bible says, church, that in the end times, uh, that uh, before they were gathered, it says that the children of Israel would become a byword mm -hmm. in the midst of the nations. Yeah. They would have a certain name that everybody in the nation, among the nations, calls them, that everybody knows, and it's a word for taunting. It is a word of reproach. And it says that his children would be a reproach among the nation. They would, uh -huh. the nations would look at the children of Israel and they would be constantly rebuking them, yeah. Yeah. constantly correcting yeah. them, constantly putting more shame on them. Right. Yes. And Lord knows, uh, when, uh, oh, when somebody has, uh, wrongly been murdered by authorities yeah. and in plain view, in plain sight for all to see and yet people go back and then begin to muddy up yeah. That's right. the victim's life and his character and, 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 and in order to try to justify something that is clearly unjust. Come on and preach. Yeah. That's bearing reproach. That's bearing shame. Right. Yes, it is. Uh, not only on that side, but even it's an interesting thing. And I, and, and I, I try to just leave it and say it that far. I say that it's interesting. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting to hear not not just the victim, but anybody who dares to call out injustice yeah. for what it is, mm -hmm. then. Folk, and in particular, church folk, in particular, people who say they love Jesus, who say they love this word, will then use this word to shame the people that are calling for justice or at least calling out an injustice that is clearly seen to anybody. Uh, yet, folk will use this Bible will take the words of Jesus and try to muddy even the voices of those that are calling it out. Um, once again, shame being put on these people. Now, I will give thanks, it wouldn't even be right, to not acknowledge, uh, even now, uh, that now, finally, I'm not going to go on and say that. I'll just say now, finally, in your year 400, you're starting to hear evangelicals come, come out and actually say, no, this is clearly wrong. wrong. Um, and so I give glory to God for that. Amen. Uh, if, it's, if it's sincere, <laughs> then it would have to be by the hand of God. Maybe he is beginning to lift the veil from off the nations. Uh, and so I just want to acknowledge, now it's, you're starting to get that, but still on a whole, for the most part, if they're not silent, they're outright saying, by pointing out injustice, you're dividing. You got a voice of division. That is, once again, shame being put on the face of his people. And the scripture we're looking at says, well, Jesus for the joy that he saw before him, he was able to endure the shame. Even though he did nothing wrong, he endured that shame because he knew what was waiting ahead. And church, it's a strong word uh, for those that can hear. Uh, you need to be prepared to endure this shame until the very end. How? Holding on to the precious promises that have been shown, that have been revealed unto you 
according to his word. And his word is not going to return unto him void. But if he said it, he will bring it to pass. Uh, and go on and say, look, uh, think about it now. Because consider him that endured such a contradiction as sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. There have been some that have resisted unto blood, striving against a particular sin. Medgar Evers, Martin Luther King Jr., Amen. Malcolm X, fighting one particular sin. They shed blood fighting against this one particular sin. Don't say I'm trying to make them something, compare them to Christ. I'm talking about how they died to fight one particular sin. But our Lord and Savior, what we're doing is beholding him because he died to fight against all sin. And unlike those men who died, this man who was both man and God had no sin in him, yet he was willing to die against all sin. Yes. And he says, we need to stop looking. I love it when the Holy Ghost does it and he confirms his word. We need to stop looking and getting distracted. Just as the prayer came up, uh, just as uh, the song was sung, we, we need to stop getting distracted from all these things that are going on. And we need to behold oh, the on. face of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to hold on to the solid Rock, make sure our anchor is not in anything else. Right. Watch this. Not even in seeing the rise of our people. You don't hear me today. Yeah. But our anchor should be in the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm trusting in him. Yeah. The things that he has shown, Trust the things him. that he has promised, he will bring them to pass. Amen. And he is my example. So I'm looking away from those things that are happening and I'm looking back toward his face. Yes. And it's a sure word. It was a word then, just like it's a word now. This is the book of Hebrews. It was written to Hebrews. It was written to Hebrews who were enduring, watch this, persecution. Not particularly to the hand of Gentiles. No, these were Hebrews that were enduring persecution coming from other Hebrews. Because these particular Hebrews actually believed that Jesus was the fulfillment of everything that the prophets had been talking about in the Old Testament. They actually believed that he was the one that Isaiah was talking about when he says, Behold, a child is born unto us, a son is given. He shall be called a wonderful counselor. God Almighty. Oh my God. And they actually dared to believe that this Jesus who died on a cross was buried in a grave and yet was resurrected. And that after his resurrection, stayed in the midst of his disciples for about 40 days, teaching them. He told them to stay right where you are because you got to wait for the falling of the Holy Spirit. Just stay where you are. Now, I'm about to go on up to death, but you stay right where you are. Ten days later, just like Jesus said, the Holy Ghost fell and it gave them that power. And that power was to witness that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so because they believed this and went on and did what the Holy Ghost was on them for, they went out and told folk. They were receiving persecution Hallelujah. from folk who look just like them uh -huh. because they actually believe this. Yes. And this letter was written uh, to encourage them to let them know, uh, look, you better consider the one who died for all of us lest you be wary uh -huh. yeah. and faint in your minds. Lest you begin to get wary. 
what is the cry that we're hearing right now? I'm we tired. T I E D. We tired. I wish I had a witness. Come on. Come on. And he said, this word is for us, lest you get weary and begin to faint. No, just remember the one who endured for all of us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. And look, it's a sure word for us because, look, uh, just like he starts out this chapter and he says, look, let us continue to run the race with patience. Right. And he says, letting go of every sin that does befall us. Yes. In other words, we still, all of us, even as we're walking in Christ, we still have some sin that we can let go of. Amen. Preach. And one of the tricks of the enemy uh -huh. is to make a people who are persecuted mm -hmm. so to put all their attention and focus on the persecution. Yes. And they can actually forget that, no, you still got some sin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That needs to be dealt with. You still got some sin that could fall off of you. Watch this. And he says, let it fall off because then you will be lighter so you can run the race better. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And so he says, look, don't forget uh, the word that says endure the chastisement of a father because every father that loves his child chastises them. Yes, no chastisement feels good. But Lord knows if you allow yourself to go through it, it will produce great fruits of righteousness. And that's not something that we want to hear in particular. But the truth is, we are coming to the end of our period of chastisement. We are in the year four. We still, not in 401, we still in year 400. The end, we are almost there in August 19th. Year 400 will be complete. We are coming to the end of our chastisement. But think about when you chastise your child. It is not, we think about chastisement as just the punishment. It's not punishment just for punishment's sake. You chastise your child, you punish your child when they have done wrong so that you can train them to do better. You chastise your child, you punish them so that they will learn the error of their ways and walk a little bit better. Right. I, I hate it that these are the only things, that, well, it's not the only thing, but it seems like the thing that we can see clearest. Yes. Uh, I've heard it said, I'd rather beat my child today then have them grow up later without the beating mm -hmm. and have somebody take them down. Come on. You preach. Is that a common saying? And you understand what's being said. So yes. I'm really, look, it looks like, and Lord knows, I know to them it doesn't feel good, it, it's not comfortable, but I'd rather chastise them now and then right. learn to walk a little bit better so that the favor of God can rest on their lives and steer them away from the trouble right. that so many of our people look like they are prone to run directly towards. Right. Yes. Some of our people are running to yes. trouble even now, putting themselves in harm's way. Yes, yes, yes. that's so. In error. Uh, and so this word is given to us. He says, look, no, uh, uh, endure the chastisement because when you do, you allow yourself to be one of God's sons and the end of that thing is you are going to produce fruits of righteousness before God Almighty. And look, uh, I, I mean, make no mistake, I am in favor of black lives. Well. I say it unapologetically. Mm -hmm. I like to see more of us have healthy black families uh, doing well in our own communities, with our own businesses, yeah. where we are looking after one another, mm -hmm. praying over one another, right. yes. uh, passing down the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, reproducing. Amen. That's right. I like to see more of us reproduce. Amen. I say it unapologetically. And I say it because the one of the lies of this land is, it's like I'm saying something wrong for me to say that. 
Anybody else can talk good about their community, but when we stand up and say something about ours, it's like you say, in, in particular, folk in the church, saying you're saying something wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm in favor of that. But please be sure uh, I am not in favor of foolishness. Yeah. Come on. Right. We are not in favor of unrighteousness. Yeah. I'm yeah. in favor of more black folk living so that, just like the Bible says, they can worship the Lord in Amen. spirit and in truth. Amen. So they can live lives that are holy before the Lord yeah. to his glory. Yeah. I am not in favor of the dismantling of the black household. No. I am not in favor of, you know, let's, just, let's have justice uh, so that people can be free to live lives that are directly against, opposite, opposing the righteousness that is listed in this word. And you need to check out, I'm not going to name names, you know what I'm talking about, but you need to do your own research, go up there because they lay it out for you, go up there and these things, these people that we say that we're following, that we're getting in line because they're actually doing something. I wish I had a witness today. You need to go and look in, in their website, see who they say they are, look at their platform, look what they say. Because if they stand for they are directly against patriarchy, they got a problem with God because God is in favor of patriarchy. Come on. God saw fit. They didn't say that a man was better than a woman, but he said they have different functioning roles and he function, he wants the man as the head yeah. over the house yeah. leading the rest of the household. Yeah. Why? So the wife can be a slave? Why? So she can be looked at? Why? So she can no. know. So that she can function right along with him right. and everything in many a ways the Bible says he, he made man but it says when he made woman he made her in a skillful way. Yes. She got some stuff that the man ain't got yes. yet he sees fit to say I, but I want the man in the lead yes. because when he's in the lead they will function together as one and glorify me. Yes. So if your platform is in favor of breaking down patriarchy, if your platform is in favor of telling people that they are born this way and, and to encourage to live any kind of way that is directly opposite from what the Word of God says, that is not, watch this, I'm not in favor of that. No. I'm not in favor of that. I'm definitely not in favor of folk following the, the thing to a certain place and then there they get into a position of power and once they're in a position of power, then start laying out their program. And everybody that thought all they were doing was fighting for the injustice to see, make sure that we still alive. I wish I had witness to that. Now, they get a program coming to them, look, this is how we're going to operate from now. From now on, we don't want, uh, we don't want any strong males around. Come on, the only males we want are those that are effeminate. We're going to put them in lead. Come on. We don't want any men in the household. We actually want two parent households with mothers with it. Come on, you're freaking. You need to look at these platforms right. and see what you're actually a part of, what you're supporting. Right. And when you look at the platform, it all point back, not just to them, because I'm not bashing my brothers and sisters. They they got a great fire and a great zeal. Right. But the Bible says our folk have a tendency. I wish yeah. if we only knew that we just look at this Bible. Our folk have a tendency to have a zeal, but not necessarily according to God. But we got plenty of folk that got fire and zeal. But zeal to do whatever they want to do, not to get in line with God's word. And so if you see these platforms and see, you should actually be able to see that. Even though they look like us, they're doing the same thing that they're protesting against. They are carrying out the oppressor's agenda. The, the, the agenda of the oppressor is to break up your family. The agenda of the oppressor is to make sure there's no strong men around. The agenda of the oppressors is to make. Oh, look. You want to see who's really behind these movements? Somebody. It's folk, it's, it's us that just want to live. I wish I had a witness. We're not even, we're not demanding this and this and that. We just want to live. Come on, 
Oh. I would be able to sit. I would be able to stand on the end of the corner without somebody harassing. Me. Oh. I would be able to grill in the park just like y'all without somebody calling the popo on me. Oh. I would be able to have a little girl set up a lemonade stand without oh. somebody calling the police on her. The same police that you have already seen time, time and again that are quick to run up. Hop out the car with weapons drawn before. Yes, Come on, Frank. All we're saying is we want to live. Uh -huh. Amen. That's all we're saying is we want to live. Amen. Uh, and there's other folk over here that because I'm gonna go ahead and preach. Go ahead, go ahead and preach. Tell. There's That's some folk over here. Mm -hmm. And watch this. I'll even say it. It's not your fault. Uh -huh. You don't have you don't have nothing to do. <laughs> Come on. No, uh -huh. you work there. You can't go back years and years mm. to change what your ancestors. You can't do that. Can't do you didn't yourself physically do it, but you're still enjoying yes, the benefits. Yeah. Come on. But because you're enjoying the benefits, you won't say anything against it that makes you complicit. And if you let the Holy Spirit speak a word of truth because you are complicit and because you know it's wrong, you feel guilty. Even if you won't ever say it, you feel guilty. Right. Yes. And you're not supposed to feel guilt oh, if you in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Come on. You're not supposed to, but you still feel it because you know you're still partaking. You know that you're complicit. And since you that guilt still remains, you're expecting a backlash to come. Yeah. And since you're expecting yeah. an arising, a revolt, since you're expecting yeah. that, you all have the spirit of fear on you. And for that spirit of fear, you have, uh, according to the flesh, you have built up arsenals. You ride around with arsenals on the backs of your trucks because you're ready. Locked and loaded, waiting for a supposed great war. Watch this thing. We don't even want. Come on, preach. We just want to live. Yes. But folk have been passing it down yep. yes, sir. to prepare yourself mm -hmm. and watch. This, but this is what I'm getting to. And there's someone, not on this side, mm -hmm. not on that side, uh -huh. that is watching the whole thing from back here. Uh -huh. yeah. And that is actually stirring up both sides. I wish I had a... And nobody will turn around to the back of the theater yeah. hey, and say, what about, oh, yeah. Lord, yeah. come on, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is the great challenge that we have. The great challenge is actually the verse that we started with. And pray with me and we'll get on through this thing. This is actually what we came here uh, to hear about, what the Spirit is saying today. The Spirit says, look, if you're in Christ Jesus and you know that you've been saved, you know that he died for all your sins, you know that they have been removed from you as far as the east is from the west. You know that the blood of Jesus wow. is over you. And because of that, you stand in a place of favor between God Almighty, who is the judge of all things. Amen. And when he looks at you, he judges you. He calls you righteous. Amen. Not because of your own works, but because of the blood of his son. Yes. If you know that to be the truth then we do have a challenge uh -huh. to what? Follow peace. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. He says with all, all men. men. Uh -huh. You see that? Yeah. Follow peace with all men and holiness, holiness. without which no man shall, shall see the Lord. Now look, 
This is preached oftentimes. Uh, uh, we said it before. I'm going to keep on saying it as long as I can until the Lord tells me something different. We preach this that this is saying uh, follow peace with all men and holiness unless without which nobody's going to get into heaven. That's basically what we preach. We, we preach it like that's what he's saying. Like uh, Follow peace with all men and uh, and you better keep it all holy. Make sure you got all your holiness, doing all your holiness. Otherwise, you're not going to get into heaven. Right. That is not what is being said here. And I'll tell you, look, look what comes right after. It's a colon. Uh -huh. What is a colon? A colon is there to tell you that these on either sides of these colon, you're actually saying the same thing. And matter of fact, what comes after the colon is just really an extension of, examples of what was said in the first. And what comes after that colon is looking diligently, lest any man, he's talking about in the midst of an assembly. He's not talking about the individual. He says your actions will actually impact the other people in your assembly. And he says looking diligently. Lest any man fail. Think any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of what? Bitterness. Bitterness spring, spring up, trouble, trouble you, and therefore defile many. Come on. So the first part is it is not saying keep uh follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which, you're not going to get into heaven. That's not. Because according to my Bible, Jesus' blood was shed yeah. so that your sins could be forgiven. forgiven right. And you were given the Holy Ghost, yeah. which is a seal yeah. to keep us yeah. until the day of redemption. Yeah. Now, the, the Holy Ghost is a down payment uh -huh. on Come the on. already purchased possession of you. Yeah. And matter of fact, Ephesians tells us that when, when Jesus rose, that God made it such that when Jesus rose, your, your spirit rose with him. Uh -huh. And he says that the truth is our spirits are connected to him right now in heaven. Yeah. Oh, y'all, come on now. Y'all don't read Ephesians chapter 2. We are already right now somewhere around the throne. So that's not what, no, what is being said here is follow peace, pursue peace, peace. run after peace, mm -hmm. uh, uh, make sure that you fight yes. for peace yes. with all men, all men. and yes, you right. need to live a set apart life, right. there ought to be something different about, you. about your lifestyle. You ought to be able to be seen in your life that the Holy Ghost right. is working in you. Yes, watch this. For what reason? Without which, if they can't see men like you, like me, women like you, like you, watch this, that were like everybody else, sinners. If they cannot see men and women whose lives have been transformed, if they cannot see men and women who look like new creatures in Christ Jesus, how do you know? Well, Jesus said, you're going to know my disciples by how they show love one towards another. And if you're serious, if, if you've been saved and you've got the love of Jesus in you, you it ought to be some love, some of that love that you receive right, ought to yeah. pour back out like David said. Your cup yeah. ought to overrun yeah. and be showing love to somebody else. That means you're going to be fighting for peace with yeah. your brothers and sisters. Yeah. If folk cannot see that in the life of folk who say that they are saved, Come on. they will not see Jesus Come on. on this side of heaven. And the whole reason why we were saved, why we were sanctified, why we were born again, is so that when people look at us, they don't see us anymore, but now they see Jesus in us. Yes. When folk see Jesus in the midst of his people, 
then there is a grace available for all people. Right. When folks see that people that have challenges just like you, right. just like me, we're not talking about white folk. We can't say that white folk is all prejudiced and act like black folk ain't prejudiced. All of us got prejudice. Yes. All of us got sin. Yeah. Yes. But what needs to be seen is all of us who have had sin and who have had our sin dealt with now have been saved, now have been born again, and now we're walking after the Spirit. Yeah, we still got some sins that we need to let go of, but you can see that God is working in our lives. Amen. When folk can see that, they can see that Jesus is in the midst. And when they know that Jesus is in the midst, if he did it for you, then he can do it for me. If they see that the grace of God is on your life, then they know that it's not about them. It's not because they were so holy by themselves, but it's because God worked in their lives. And if God worked in their lives, then God can help me with mine. Amen. This is what this scripture is talking about, church. Yeah. He says, be careful, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Yes. If they don't see folk fighting for peace, yes. if they don't see lives that are led by the Holy Ghost, then all that remains they feel like, man, well, these people call themselves saves and they still act, they still cutting up, they still fighting one another, and they call themselves saved. What am I going to do? Come on, preach. That's true. And if these, watch this, and if these are the people that's older than me in Christ, I, yeah. come, on. come on, hey. Many babes in Christ just got saved on fire for the Lord, get in the church, and then that, that fire is fizzled out. Come on, exactly. help somebody. After they go to one meeting. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Mercy, I wish I had. Come on. Come on. If they don't know, if they don't see the power working in somebody else's lives, then all that they see is just what's going on, flesh. And if all I see is flesh, then how am I? I'm just coming in. I'm just starting. Lord, how am I actually supposed to get it? Come on. Because watch this, and the flesh works on both sides because it's either I see the folk that say they're saved and they're constantly fighting uh, and I don't see a holiness or I see a holiness according to outward appearance. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And the folk that got a holiness according to outward appearance are those, yes, you ain't never seen them do nothing. Yes, you ain't never heard them. <laughs> Come on. You ain't heard it don't mean they ain't done it. Come you ain't on. seen it don't mean they ain't done it. But what you see is pressed shiny and clean and what comes out of their mouth is yeah and I had something to do with it. Well, come on. Man. Go away. Come, come on. on man. That is not the grace of God on somebody's life. It is on their life because they, they could have been struck dead but it don't look that way. It looks like somebody that performed yeah. because that's the typical thing that they say God is blessing me because I do dot 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 and that's the reason why. Where is Jesus? Did Jesus have anything to do with it? Come on, preach. So if all they see is that, then they don't see any grace. Then all they're left with is their own works and their own abilities. And if that's all they get, I'm here to tell you, that, that sliver of doubt, I'm telling you, that, that, that loss of faith will be there and it then now because I don't have any help and it's only going to be according to how good I can do on my own up comes this root of bitterness Come on. and that's what many of our people are fighting about right now are out there protesting because they don't see any grace they don't see any justice and it looks like it's only according what? To how fast I can put my hands up? Yeah, you got to how fast I can drop to the floor? Come on. Because you can stop me, I can put my hands on the steering wheel and somebody say, and I was threatened. Yeah. Come on. 
And so you don't see no grace. No grace. And you see mistreatment accordingly. A spirit of bitterness mm. comes Come up. Yeah. Preach. And he says that's why it's all the more important. Look, remember what's being said. We tired. But it's all the more important for those who believe, those who are sanctified, set apart in Christ Jesus, those who do know that you are walking in the grace of God. It's all the more important for you to represent Christ Jesus at this time. It's all the more important for you to look more like Jesus at this time. How? By fighting for peace. Yes. By living set apart life according to his power. Yes, Lord. Somebody needs to see Jesus, and if they don't see it in you, they might not see it. Come on. Amen. And it's important in these end times because I have to tell you, I tell you before, I, I don't like to tell you, but it's just the truth. The truth is this is the beginning of sorrows. True. The word. And we're talking about we tire now, but well, the Bible says More to come. Come the on. one who is to come. That's his job, that's his anticipation, is to wear out God's people. Yes. So it's not time, it is not time for us to say we tired now. We just beginning. So if we're going to make it through this thing, the Bible says, according to this scripture, that we got to stop looking at outside and turn back to the face of our Lord and Savior. We need to look away. Look away from the judgments. Look away at the pronouncements. Look away at how men are conducting themselves and look back to the face of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Remember where we have come to. If you have been saved, sanctified, and delivered, you God has translated you from the darkness of this world into his marvelous light. When Jesus prayed for his disciples and everybody that will follow after and believe on him, he said, God, he's speaking to the Father. He said, God, I'm not telling you to take them out of the world. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm praying that you will keep them, that you will guard them while they're still in this world. Just because the world treats you a certain way, that's not how you are to see yourself. Right. Just if the whole world condemns you, calls you a byword, seeks to put shame on you, it's for you to turn away from what the world is saying and hear what your God is saying. Amen. Watch this. We don't often get to this part when we quote this scripture, but it says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Watch this. But every word that rises up against us. And he doesn't say Jesus is going to come down. He doesn't say he's going to send an angel. He says, you, since you know you've been saved, since you know you're a child of the living God, yes. you ought to believe in enough inside of yourself yes. that when lies come against you, yes. it's now the spirit on you to stand up yes. and now you cast down those lies in the name of Jesus. Yes. You pull down the stronghold by the word of your tongue. Yes. You condemn the condemners. Yes. This is the heritage of the saints of the Most High. And their righteousness is not according to ourselves. Our righteousness is not just if we live as good as they say we should live. Our righteousness is in Jesus Christ alone. I don't care if the whole world try to call me outside my name. I'm a child of the living King. Soon to return. And I don't hate you. I just don't have time to listen to the lies that's coming out your head. Come on, preach. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Please be reminded you have not come. Watch this. Even you in your at the end of your captivity, at the end of 
in your time of chastisement. At the end of the time, that God, yes, he assigned to our people. Why? So he could train out of us. Yes. Any residual of the spirit that was in the ancestors at that time that dared come across their lips, let his blood be upon us. And on our children, yeah. God is going to whip, literally, whip that, train that out of us. Yes. Because he's coming back. So when he comes back, he needs folk to receive him. So that spirit that was rejecting him needs to be totally removed. Don't act like we don't have no sin. Don't act like just because we're being persecuted, being afflicted, and mistreated, that that means that we are without sin. We are not. We still got some sin that needs to drop off of us. Watch this. Even that spirit of those who reject Christ in these end days, that spirit is standing up. Yes. Yes, sir. And the same people that the only reason why we are, oh my God, have mercy. God heard the prayers of our grandmamas, our great grandmamas, those that were slaves that lived hard lives. Yet when they got into their secret closet, they began to call on Jesus. They began to call out the names of their children, their grandchildren, their great grandchildren, and whoever would come. And God is rewarding those prayers. Be alive, not because we so great, Hello. not because we know better. No. Mm. Come on. Even in this Hebrew awakening, folk act like, teach like, preach like sometimes, like those folk in the old days, like they was missing something. Like God only hears folk who now realize who they are, and now they're keeping the Sabbath, and now that's the re what? Oh, oh, you raggedy behind didn't know anything about who you were, but you are living because of the prayers of those folk who you say didn't know so much. Amen. If you just stay the name of the Lord Jesus, oh Lord, that's between you Preach. and him, but it's the name of the Lord Jesus. That's all they knew. They cried out to that, and their, their prayers have availed much. And so we wonder why it took so long. Well, we're in the year 400, and you still see this, arrogant, this spirit of arrogance. Uh -huh. That act like it's a it's my works is the reason why I'm come on, come on. isn't this the same thing that was preached to the Hebrews? And weren't they dealing with the exact same challenge? Then that's why we're reading it. Because they were dealing with the exact same challenge. Folk who did not believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, that his blood and his blood alone is the thing that brings me before the Father without blame. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It is purely it all to Jesus, all to him I owe. Oh. All of the ground is sinking sand. We have not come to the old covenant of the mountain that shook, yeah. that was full of dark clouds, that was great thundering uh, coming on down, that everybody around was so scared. They said, Moses, we can't even deal with them. You talk with them. We, we don't even want to come around them. If we hear his voice again, we going to die just from faith. Uh -huh. And Moses himself said, I I'm scared too. Uh -huh. Oh, Lord, help me preach this passage. Uh -huh. He says, that's not the covenant that we came into in Christ Jesus. Even though you're at the end of your chastisement and as a nation you had a sentence that you had to go through, yet he didn't wait till year 400 before you got saved. He didn't wait till the end of 400 till you, your family started being blessed in the land of your enemies. Oh Lord have mercy. No, when you received Jesus, you came into a new covenant. Oh, you came to Mount Zion. Oh, to an innumerable, countless angels all around. Oh, you came to 
the church of the firstborn. Because Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. And so the church that you're a part of is the church of the firstborn. Because once you receive Jesus and you get saved, you are born again. Yes, you have come to uh, the assembly of those, those men, just men, made perfect. Spirits of the just men made perfect. What assembly did you come to? You came to the assembly, the church of the firstborn, where sinners, yet by the blood of Jesus, were made justified. And after they were justified, Oh Lord, they transitioned into heaven and they were made perfect. Y'all were up. Yeah. And you came to Jesus, the mediator of a new and better covenant, yeah. built on better promises. This is the assembly you are part of, whose blood screams way better things than Abel's blood. Because you know, Cain and Abel were brothers. And they both made sacrifices unto the Lord, presentations. And the Bible says that when Abel gave his sacrifice, oh, God couldn't stop staring at it, it looked so good. But when Cain made his presentation, God didn't have respect for it. And so Cain got jealous of his brother. And it says that he slew his brother. And the Bible says when Abel couldn't talk no more, the blood that was in the earth was calling all the way up to heaven. And God heard the voice of Abel's blood crying out for vengeance. Avenge me. But that's not the blood we came to. We didn't come to the blood of Abel. We came to the blood of Jesus. Abel didn't choose to be killed. But the blood of the one who we came to, oh, Jesus chose to die. He didn't get down off that cross. He never said a mumbling word. And his blood, oh, after it was shed, when it cries out, it cries out, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. This is the church that you belong to. This is the glory that you walk in. This is the favor that's on your life. And I dare any devil in hell to try to steal, rob that from us. Amen. But it's up to us to turn back to his face. Turn away from what we see on the television and look to the face of the Lord Jesus. Innocent blood has been shed. And please believe, just like it happened in Abel, it's happening today. When innocent blood is shed, please believe it's going all the way up to heaven. And God the Father hears that blood. But that's not to be our focus. Our focus is to see what the blood of Jesus has done over our lives. So that we would hold on to this face in the midst of persecution. He didn't say you wouldn't have no trouble. He said in this life, you will have troubles. But I will never leave you. And I never forsake you. And so hold on to this precious thing. Because the Bible says in the end times, there's going to be a great falling away. There's going to be a lot of folk because they tie. We let go of the living king. And this word is to encourage us. You've got to hold on to him. He's our everything. It might not look like it. Oh, but if you just wait, oh, Lord, have mercy. You don't want to hear the thing that preachers have been preaching for 400 years, but you need to keep on hearing it if you just hold on. I wish you ought to be able to see it already. 
Something is changing. Something is shifting. God's favor is returning. His glory is starting to rise on his people again. And it ends, this chapter says, there's a shaking in the end times. One more time. And when he says there's going to be one more shaking, that means after this shaking, everything is left, is left, and ain't going to be no more shaking. That means it's going to be a whole lot of shaking going on. A whole lot of shaking. Come on. A whole lot of shaking. And be sure, be very sure that your anger is holding on to the solid rock of Jesus. You can't walk by sight. You got to walk by faith. Come on. And make sure you hold it on to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Yes. Because a lot of things will be shaken. Yes, Lord. It's going to be a burning away. Yes, sir. Only thing that's going to remain is the things that were done for Christ. Amen. 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 You heard Peter say that when judgment comes, it begins in the house of God. And that sounds severe. It sounds like, Lord, we're just trying to make it through. Lord, we already been through. Why are you going to come to us first? Church, beloved, hear this word. Hear this word. It sounds severe. But it's actually mercy and grace that he comes to you first. That's what you're seeing. Yeah, judgment is falling. I dare say it, even on our people first. But why? Because we're still holding some things that need to be shaken off. And there's a greater shaking. I told you just in the beginning. There's a greater shaking coming. And rather than let you skip through and go on about your merry ways, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Before this thing started happening, we weren't having regular prayer. Folk wasn't having regular family time prayer. Folk wasn't always regularly so eager to get in this Bible to taste this word. Some folk came to the church and took it for granted. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. It don't act like, no, there's still something that needs to be shaken. We were trusting and believing, oh Lord, there's something in us that's causing us to believe more about the dream of America than the truth of God's word. And as long as we were comfortable, as long as I can go to work, get off, go to food line, get exactly what I need, I got more than enough. As long as I don't have any problems with the law, it's okay. You're right. Come on. But after this thing, it brought us, it literally brought us into the house. Forced us to seek his face. He started doing something great. And just like folk are talking about there's going to be a second wave of Rona, uh -huh. I'm here to tell you there's a greater shaking. This is not the time I heard a woman say, and she was by the Spirit of God, this is not the time to go back to sleep. Uh -huh. I heard somebody else say, we are in the eye of the storm now. We were doing just fine, and then the storm came along, and it shook us all up. And now we in the middle, we in the eye of the storm. This is not the time to go back to sleep. This is not the time to let go of your perseverance before the face of the Almighty King. This is not the time to go back to business as usual. Because please believe, just as we in the middle right now, there's some more storm coming. And it's going to do some more shaking. And instead of letting us slip by to get truly tearing it and shaking all away, because if we're trusting in anything but Jesus the solid rock, if you trusted in the government, come on, if you trusted in these stores to take care of you and your family, come on, you in 
for a rude awakening. And when the grave shaking goes on, folk that don't have a firm root in Christ Jesus, because of all the shaking going on, they're going to let go. But because you are so precious to him, he starts shaking you first. So that he gives you the warning so you can be firmly holding on to him. And what comes that is coming, it's going to blow right by you. A thousand shall fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Because you dwell it in the secret place of the Most High God. You're not trusting in America. But you're trusting in Jesus. And that needs to be said. You're not trusting in America. I'm not preaching rebellion. I'm tearing down strongholds. I'm tearing down idols. You don't believe in America. You believe in Jesus. And when everything else falls apart, when he returns, oh Lord, have mercy. have mercy. You will live and declare the works of the living God. I got to sit down. I got to sit down. Thank you. I hear you, Lord. That's it. That's it. Amen. Behold the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of the ground is sinking sand. Yes, it is. He is for you, church. He is for you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Be you Jew or be you Gentile. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he is for you. But we all need to make sure that we're holding on to him and not trying to hold on to some carnal, fleshly power and privilege. Thank you, Lord. There may be one who does not know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins. Won't you come forward at this time? I know, I know you're in your living room. You can still step forward. Step forward as a sign unto the Most High. Nobody can see it but you and those in your household. Step forward if he's calling your name right now. Won't you receive him as Lord? Speak. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I am in need of a Savior because I cannot save myself. But I believe you are the Son of the living God. I believe you came in this world that you died on a cross to take away all my sins. I believe you died, and I believe you rose again. Yeah. And I'm asking you, come be Lord over my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and begin to teach me to walk in ways that please you. If you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, you confess him with your mouth. You shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, let us stand. Let us stand. We're going to just go on in the benediction. That's all right. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Go in peace today. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Amen.